Long ago and far away in enchanted lands across the seas lived kings and queens, princes and princesses, good fairies and wicked witches, ferocious giants and gentle dwarfs. Their adventures and stories have been told for hundreds of years. Open the pages and listen to the words and you too can join the magical world of Once Upon a Time. The Emperor's Nightingale Once upon a time, in China, there was an emperor who lived in the most beautiful palace in the world. In fact, everything in it was so beautiful and so delicate that his courtiers daren't touch anything. And the palace gardens were even more wonderful than the palace itself. They were filled with the most exotic flowers, which gave out such lovely perfume that all the emperor's courtiers swooned with delight whenever they walked there. His subjects were allowed to wander in the gardens between dawn and dusk, and the emperor spent many hours talking to them. One day, he came across a local fisherman. Did you know that a nightingale with the sweetest singing voice in the world lives in your gardens, said the fisherman. This is news to me, said the emperor. And the emperor, who was used to getting everything he wanted, commanded his courtiers to search high and low for the nightingale. For one whole day, his courtiers searched. They looked in the golden pagodas and in the jeweled summer houses. They shouted up into the tall trees with their luscious green branches and exotic flowers. By dusk, the courtiers' voices were hoarse with shouting for the nightingale. Let us retire for a cup of china tea, my friends, said the chief courtier. So they sat down in one of the golden pagodas and discussed where they would look next. And as the kitchen maid was serving the tea, she overheard their conversation. I know where the nightingale lives, said the kitchen maid. I hear it singing every evening when I go and visit my sick mother. So all the courtiers followed her into the gardens until they came to the tallest tree. Look, he's sitting above us in that tree, said the kitchen maid. And there the little nightingale sat, singing his heart out. But he looks so ordinary, said the chief courtier, who was a bit of a snob. The little nightingale may have looked like an ordinary bird, but he certainly had an extraordinary voice. And when he had finished his song, the kitchen maid said, Sweetest Nightingale, the Emperor of China has commanded that we take you to him. He wants to hear you sing. I feel very honored that he has asked me, said the Nightingale. So the Nightingale followed the happy band of courtiers and the kitchen maid to the Emperor's palace. The Emperor had made elaborate preparations for the Nightingale. In the great banqueting hall, he had set up an amazing golden perch for the little bird. And when the Nightingale entered the hall, the Emperor gently sat him on his finger and led him to the jeweled perch. Sing for me, little Nightingale, said the Emperor. So the nightingale started to sing straight away, and his song sounded so sweet that tears rolled down the old emperor's cheeks.
The nightingale was such a success with the emperor that he was given his own special cage at court. He was allowed out in the palace gardens twice a day, but twelve servants had to accompany him, and each one had to hold on to a thin silk ribbon that was attached to the bird's legs. There were many gossips in the Emperor's kingdom, and whenever people met in the street, the nightingale was the most popular topic of conversation. The Emperor even opened up his palace to the public for one day so that his subjects could come inside and look at the nightingale in his golden cage and listen to his beautiful voice. Each day, his subjects would bring presents to the Emperor as a thank you for letting them see the beautiful bird. But one day, the chief courtier delivered a package to the Emperor, and nobody knew who had sent it. It was so elaborately wrapped that the Emperor couldn't wait to open it. The impatient Emperor ripped off the wrapping paper, and there were gasps of amazement from the courtiers when they saw the fabulous gift. It was a clockwork nightingale that was made of silver and gold and studded with emeralds, rubies and sapphires. In its back was a little key and when the emperor wound it up, it sang a little song. Let's hear the two nightingales sing a duet together, said the chief courtier. The emperor then wound up the clockwork bird and commanded the real nightingale to sing at the same time. But each bird sang in a different key, and all the courtiers clapped their hands over their ears because of the terrible din. Stop that dreadful noise, said the chief courtier. The real nightingale stopped singing straight away, but the clockwork bird couldn't stop. He went on and on, singing the same song over and over again. The courtiers were so busy staring at the jeweled bird and were so entranced by its solo performance that they didn't notice that the real nightingale had flown away. Let uh, the real nightingale sing for us now, said the emperor, but when he turned towards the cage, he saw that it was empty. Where has the real nightingale gone? said the emperor. But his courtiers weren't worried. They told the emperor that he was left with the best bird. And still the clockwork bird kept singing the same song over and over again. But it was a complicated song, and the courtiers weren't bored with it because they hadn't learned it by heart yet. Everyone was impressed with the clockwork bird, but nobody praised it more than the master of the Emperor's music. Listen to me, he said. The real Nightingale is not reliable. We never know exactly what he's going to sing, but with the clockwork bird we know where we are. He has one song and no other. We can even open him up and look inside the cylinder and find how the song was created. Indeed, the clockwork bird has no secrets from us. You are absolutely right, cried the courtiers. But the fisherman didn't agree. You are all making a big mistake, he shouted. The real nightingale sings from the depth of his heart, and that is something that a clockwork toy could never do. But nobody took any notice of the fisherman, and the real nightingale was banished from the kingdom. 
It's time to turn over to side two. Thank you.